So I've got 0.6 of an inch. So absolutely fantastic. Up two hundred. <laughs> yes. Hey guys and welcome to Aussie Reviews. Well today I'm checking out the Howe Model 1500 in the new mini action chambered in 223. Now this rifle was sent up to me by OSA or Outdoor Sporting Agencies who are the importer for Howe here in Australia. So let me just go ahead and clear it so you can see there's no live ammunition anywhere near the rifle. Now the rifle comes in a couple of different uh, versions. You've got the 20 inch ultralight, which is obviously a 51 centimeter barrel or 20 inches. You've got the 20 inch varmeter, which I've actually got here for review. It comes in a uh, blued barreled uh, action. And you've also got the 22 inch sporter, which comes in both the blue and uh, stainless finish. Now this new mini action is um, scaled down about 12% from the standard uh, size to match the 223 or 204 Ruger um, cartridge. You can get it in either or. Now the stock on it guys is a uh, green stock that I've got here. It's available in uh, black as well, but it is a polymer stock. Now at the rear you've got a generous uh, recoil pad. It's um, obviously not needed for uh, you know those smaller calibers, but still it grips nicely to your shirt when you bring it up to the shoulder. You got uh, rear and also a front uh, sling attachment there as well. So just uh, showing you the run by of it there, you can see that it really is that nice varmeter look. So you know if you like those sort of rifles with the heavier barrel and the semi-tactical look, I guess I use that term loosely. But uh, you know some of the guys out there really like that look, and this um, rifle certainly um, satisfies that. Now uh, the polymer trigger guard um, that you've got here will naturally take a little bit of weight off the overall weight of the rifle. Also to the 10-shot uh, polymer magazine, exactly the same, it's going to take a little bit of weight off. Overall the weight of the rifle is about 3 kilo or uh, 6.5 pounds. Now the um, action on this is uh, quite unique because it's um, the receiver is the same as a Remington 700. So two-piece bases will fit perfectly. So that's what I've got on here. They sent that up with uh, some quick release rings and the optic on top is a Nikon uh, 4 to 16 by 42. Now the good thing about this optic is it's actually matched to a 55 grain polymer tip 2 to 3 round moving at 3,240 uh, feet a second. So how does it actually work? So I'll give you, I guess, the uh, quick lesson on it now is on the elevation turret here, you've got indicators from 100 up to 600 yards. So all you need to do is just sight it in and get it sighted in at 100. Then when you want to shoot to say like 200 yards, so you just dial it up, okay, to 200 and then you should be right on. So whether this is a gimmick or actually works, I'm definitely gonna try it out on the field, guys. You've got your um, focus on the side as well there at the different ranges too. So should be quite good because uh, the Nikon scopes, I mean, look, I've got a couple here that I've actually got to have a bit more um, of a play with, I guess. They're fairly cheap, you know, like, you know, to start off at, like, the, the lower end of uh, 200 like $220, $230 and sort of go up from there. So, you know, if, if it works, then, you know, some guys out there are on a budget. So we'll just see how it performs in the field. Now, the three-position safety on here is... Uh, kind of a reminder of the Ruger 77 in the sense of if you have it all the way back then you can't cycle the action naturally you can't fire the rifle move it one click forward oh, gone a bit too far you can cycle the action but you can't fire the rifle then obviously if you put it all the way forward the safety's off and then you can fire but the two stage trigger that this comes with straight out of the box is quite nice nice light take up there as you can see like I'm hardly touching that and then after that you can feel that resistance for the second stage of the trigger and then nice crisp clean break 
Now with Hower, there's a couple of um, uh, things that are a little bit different I, I find to other makers, is we've got um, a barrel action, which is how you order these, but then you actually add the stock that you want. So I find that quite unique, and you'll see the adverts on different dealers' websites where it's just the barrel action and then you sort of add everything else. So the barrel action for the Varmeter is a little bit more expensive than the other ones. So it's about $780, $800 around there. Then you add the stock, which is roughly about $100, $120. But you're still coming in under that $1,000 price point. But then you've got to add the optic on top as well. So the only thing that didn't come with this rifle was the Harris bipod, and I threw that on myself. Um, that's mine. So I just thought, well, I'll try this off the basically off the bench out on the farm just to get it sighted in to see which ammunition performs the best and then we can sort of just go from there. All right guys, well that's pretty much uh, all I can tell you about this rifle at this stage. I know there's been a few of you pestering me about uh, you know doing the how range. I've finally got one and uh, we'll just see how it performs. So let's get to it. All right guys, we've got a good variety of ammunition here to test through the Hauer today. So we'll start off with the uh, OSA ammunition loaded with the 55 grain Sierra Game Kings. Then we'll move on to the 55 grain uh, Sierra Blitz Kings, also from OSA. Then we'll go to one of my favourites, which is the 55 grain Hornady V Max. And then because we've got that one in nine twist, we'll go up to the uh, 69 grain Sierra Match Kings uh, from Outback Ammo. And then finally, we'll finish off with the actual Hornady TAP. 75 grain so this should stabilize quite well in the one and nine twist too so all we're going to do guys is we're just going to shoot five shot groups there at 100 and uh, see which one performs the best Alright guys, so here's the results at 100 yards. We've got some pretty interesting results here. We start off with the uh, OSA loaded with the 55 grain Sierra Game King. Nice little group there, uh, one flyer, but hey, you can see on the uh, results of the film just how much wind we've got blowing with the tall grass. So we'll measure it. So we've got just on an inch. 
Yep. One inch group there at 100. Then we come down to the actual uh, 55 grain uh, Blitz King, so the polymer tip. Beautiful little cluster there, isn't it? Five shot group. So I've got 0.6 of an inch. So absolutely fantastic. I'm really, really happy with that, especially in these conditions. Then when we come down to, usually it's my time-tested favourite, the uh, 55 grain uh, Horton EV Max. Disappointing through this rifle. I mean, still, you know, nice enough little group, but for my standard, uh, that's pretty disappointing. So we've probably about an inch and a half, I'd say. Or maybe, no, a little bit less. 1.2 inches. So, yeah, unfortunately it just didn't perform like this ammo normally performs with other 223s. Then when we come up to the uh, Outback ammo loaded with the 69 grain Sierra uh, Match Kings, I've got a little bit of a spread there, about 1.3 inches. Yeah, I would have expected a little bit more with that because especially the Match King projectile has that higher ballistic coefficient. So you'd think it'd buffer the wind a little bit better and perform better, but anyhow, that's the result there. Then we came down, I don't know why guys, I just automatically, I thought I was on the last ammo, so I aimed for the last target instead of following it um, sequentially. But anyhow, we've come down here with the uh, 75 grain Hornady TAP. Really, really nice. I mean, look at the cluster there. And I was really annoyed at myself when I had that one flyer there. But anyhow, we'll measure it how it is. And we're at one and a half inches there. So if we'd kept to that little cluster there, we would have been just under an inch, I'd say. Yeah, about 0.7 of an inch, 0.8 of an inch. So really quite nice. So still, I don't reckon that's a write-off. That'd be great for heavier games, especially with that 75 grain projectile. But I mean, the clear performer here is the OSA with the uh, Blitz King 55 grain, you know, polymer tip. So that Nikon scope is really for polymer tip 223, as I showed you on the intro. So I'm just going to probably come over a couple of clicks to get it right on, and then we're going to have some fun with the Howler. So just show loading of the mag, guys. It really goes in quite easy the rounds. And I found that you can actually really push them down from the top. I don't think you're supposed to, but I've uh, just seen or discovered that the polymer sort of gives way a bit. There's a bit of flex in it, so I'm just going to load it the more traditional way. And it holds them in there, and as you can see, it, it is a double stack mag. So, um, yeah, nice compact 10 round magazine. Guys, I'm just going to show you with the loading of the actual magazine into the rifle. There's, I'm, I'm finding I'm having a couple of jams here. So, I'll put the magazine in, and if you look close here, so you've got the bolt all the way back. Now, just when you bring the bolt forward, see how the round pops out like so? So, it's like the actual uh, extractor isn't holding the actual rim of the cartridge in place. So I've noticed a fair bit, and when I was first trying to, uh, you know, to shoot this, and we were shooting the groups, it was happening to me a fair bit there. So very, very frustrating. So if we go forward, see how it does it again? And it's not just a once-off, it, it's happening virtually every time. Now, the only way that I've been able to sort of fight that is really quickly, like cycle the action really quickly forward so that it doesn't even have a chance to jump off that bolt face. So, but then obviously the ejection is perfect. There's no problems there. But there again, once again, when you're actually loading the round, you've got to be like just super quick. Otherwise it just jams. So yeah, I, I just, I honestly don't think that should be happening. So we've had to go back and then forward again to get that round in. So it doesn't matter what number round we're up to in the magazine, and I've loaded all the way up to the full capacity of 10, and it just happens virtually every round unless you cycle it super quick. So uh, 
yeah, look, as I say, I just don't think that should be happening. And as you guys know, I don't hide any negatives with any of the firearm reviews I do, so this is exactly how it is. All right, guys, this is gonna be one hell of a test, this one. As you can see, look at the wind around us here. Now, I've got these 55 grain uh, Blitz Kings from OSA sighted in right on target as best as I can at 100. Now, what we're gonna do is test out this uh, Nikon scope. Now, as you can see here, if you come around and have a look at the uh, front uh, part of the upper or the top turret. Now, it's sighted in and it's right at 100, okay? So, because this is uh, basically ballistic dialed for the 223 with a 55 grain polymer tip, moving at 3,240 feet per second. I should be able to just dial it up to 200, and we should be right on at 200. So what I've done is out there at 200, I've got two cans. So there's an old stump right behind the target, and it's right at 200. So I've got two cans either side there, and I'll just see how we go. I mean, I honestly don't know how this is gonna go, guys, because like I said, look at the wind and the elements. But for me, 200 is really the maximum that I ever shoot at with a 223. So let's just see how the Nikon scope performs along with the Howler and obviously my shooting ability. Oh <laughs> yeah, look at that, right on guys, right on. Let's go for the right hand one now. <laughs> yes! That is awesome guys, absolutely awesome. So, you know, that proves that this uh, Nikon scope is right on. Once you get that sighted in there at 100, you still see here, there's no gimmick with it guys, it's still on 200, we're still 200 uh, yards or meters away here. So, it's just perfect, I could see it clearly, got the uh, side uh, parallax adjustment, put that to uh, 200, clear as can be, to slowly squeeze that trigger and just bang you know it was just right on so really really nice what more can i say guys you, well, this is a really great little setup all right guys i'll wrap up with my final thoughts on the howler uh, 1500 and 223 honestly you know i'm not a fan of a lot of cheap quality gear uh, that's just me personally but you know you guys have been asking for a lot more entry-level equipment reviews so that's what I've been really trying to do so I thought well I'll get the Howler line and have a look at it and to be quite honest I, I was very open-minded about it um, I don't like the fact that I'm having problems with the actual loading of the action when I'm just pushing the bolt forward at the speed I don't like the fact that I've got to really rip it forward so it doesn't jam so that's an issue I've definitely got to try to address but hey that is my only negative of this firearm. The accuracy, and with such, you know, really affordable ammunition from OSA there, what a fantastic combination with this Nikon scope as well. You know, I spoke about the price in the intro, guys. You know, when you're looking at a Howler firearm and you're getting uh, barreled action, you know, from like $550 odd dollars, $600 dollars, and then you throw a stock on for another $99. I mean, that is a real budget setup. But look at the results here. Look around me, look at the wind. I mean, I honestly can't be happier with the accuracy that I've got from this and just its performance in general, apart, as I said, from that loading. So anyhow, guys, look, I can't rave on about it much more. If you wanna have a look at one of these, I'll put the uh, link to OSA down underneath this um, review on YouTube have a look at one in your own time. They're virtually available from every firearms dealer here in Australia, so you can go on in, have a look at one for yourself, and I highly recommend this exact same setup if you want a great budget 223 that shoots just superbly. 
All right, guys, that's my honest thoughts on it. Hope you enjoyed the review. So till next time, we'll catch you then.